Welcome to the Improve and Have Fun podcast. My name is Paul V. Perez, and on this podcast, I work on improving myself while having fun along the way with hopes of encouraging you to do the same. This is the annual goals episode, the goals that I'm going to put forward into the new year, and that being 2020, and I hope to accomplish it by January of next year. And Lord willing, I'm alive and, and healthy to do so. This year, I only have three big goals that I want to accomplish. In the past years, it's been many more, like 10, 12. Last year was eight. And this year, it's only going to be three goals. In the past, those goals have turned into continuing habits. And you can hear what my continuing habits are going to be for this year in a recent episode of this season. But now on to the three main goals that I wish to accomplish this year. And why these three goals? And of course, I do want to hear what some of your goals are, even if it's just one goal you want to tell me. And you can do so by contacting me or by going onto the blog, which is improvinghavefun.com, or all the ways you can contact me in the show notes for this episode. Now let's get into it. Goal number one is to travel to six places. Last year, I had a goal of traveling to two places, and I actually traveled to three. And I started to get my mind more around the day trip place to travel like uh, if it's someplace on the east coast that i can get to within two to three hours that's a quick trip i can leave in the morning come back at night and go and enjoy whatever it is that i'm going to go enjoy in that place this rule doesn't apply though the day trip rule of course if i go into the west coast or if i go abroad but even if you go like to jamaica which is a trip i take annually that's like a three plus hour trip which is not that bad but that, that's doable. So a Caribbean island would be cool too. I want to travel to six places this year. And uh, the three 100% are going to be Jamaica, Arizona, and Georgia. Jamaica, because I just like to take an annual trip there to go ahead and maybe take some classes. Uh, or just go and experience the party vibe out there. Arizona, of course, to visit mom. And Georgia to visit my good friend Lenny, my friend of many years, and his family. Now, the other places I'd like to take a trip to, I find I would like to take a trip to the Dominican Republic, even if it's for a day or two or three, and just to kind of get to know a little bit of where I come from, which I don't get too much of in my regular life. I'm around a lot of Dominican folks, but I just don't ever get that homegrown feeling. As I've gotten older, I've found more of an appreciation in learning how to speak better Spanish because a lot of times I forget words and that just has a thing inside of me where I just want to get to know my roots a little bit more so I do want to go to the Dominican Republic where my parents are from I also want to go to the Grand Canyon both my aunt uncle and also my mother and my siblings they've gone and they said that it's incredible that uh, one of the things that my mom said is like you feel that God is there you know for some reason I like that, and I want to go check out the Grand Canyon. And finally, I want to go check out Las Vegas. And uh, this, this is a trip that I've been wanting to take for a long time. The trip, the real big trip that I would love to take, I definitely want to go to Japan. I said, like, uh, since I was a kid, I've wanted to go to Japan. That's, that's the biggest trip, but I don't think that trip is going to happen this year. But these are the trips I'm going to shoot for them. Like I said, they're quick trips for me. And uh, Arizona, believe it or not, when I'm on a plane for more than five hours, it gets to be brutal. That's the furthest trip that I have on this list, actually. So travel to six places, and I would love to shoot past that. And that is goal number one. Goal number two is more delayed gratification. We live in a time where... Things that pleasure us are so easily accessible, whether that be food, which we can order right directly through our phone and it comes right to our doorstep, or it could be games, where once again we can get on our phone, play games instantly, or sex, where we can go ahead and uh, pay to have sex, whether we're watching porn, and that's free, you could access that at any time, uh, you can pay, you can go see an escort. So everything at TV, like things like Netflix, things uh, like streaming channels, they're right at our fingertips. So we have so much variety, so many options right now that I think it's a, a good time to go the opposite way and practice some delayed gratification. I've really noticed this year that I kind of live a hedonistic lifestyle in the sense of like the things that pleasure me are at a moment's notice. And I want to have more delayed gratification. I've kind of gotten into a swing of that with fasting, where I will wait 20 to 24 hours to eat 
uh, I eat a big meal every 20 to 24 hours, and I feel like it's uh, it has very positive health benefits for me. It feels good. I used to drive fast before, and that's I found that it's no good. Uh, drinking water, fasting is much better. More delayed gratification. Also, uh, I've said here before multiple times, I definitely have a, a porn addiction, uh, 100%. And if I can go maybe five to seven days without watching or looking at any porn or masturbating to it or anything like that, that is a big win for me. This thing with porn, it's lasted me since I was like 15. So the times that I try to go off of it for maybe a week uh, or two, I, I definitely get withdrawals because this is something that's so familiar to me. I've gotten the last two years really went to go see sex workers often. I even sometimes now just feel very satiated when it comes to sex. And I feel like I can go probably for longer without watching porn or masturbating. But then my monkey brain wants to go to whatever pleasures it. And that's like normally food, TV, and porn. More delayed gratification and not going to those things. More semen retention because of this whole no fap thing, meaning no masturbation for a, a set amount of time. And supposedly, like, it just heightens all your other senses and things like that. And that interests me. So more semen retention, more going more days without watching porn. I, like I said, I feel like since pleasure is at my fingertips, I, I just want to refrain from always pleasuring myself and use that extra energy to go ahead and like work on the podcast or to do creative endeavors or to take more classes. Because what I've learned is like when you ejaculate, like you lose motivation and you just don't want to go and do anything. You just kind of want to blob out and and like look at TV or just eat. And that's happened to me so many times. So I want to refrain from doing that by being more creative and getting outside, being more social. That's why I feel delayed gratification will bring me. So this is a, a goal that I want to go ahead and accomplish. And how is it that I'm going to monitor this? How do I monitor delaying my gratification? I have a calendar at home and on my calendar, I write the dates that I uh, overeat when I'm having dinner. And I know I overeat because my back starts hurting. And I also am um, documenting all the times that I watch porn and that I masturbate to porn or even that I go see sex workers and trying to find longer periods of time to not do these things. But it's tough, like I said, because it's so pleasurable. I enjoy it. And my monkey mind always just wants to go to that every two to three days. So longer time, more delayed gratification. Goal number three, um, and this one is something that I started with, like I said, the whole thing of therapy and the whole thing of journaling, which I always say is fantastic, and I think everyone should do it. Goal number three is to find out more about what makes you tick. Now, this can come through digging into you know, one's own behaviors and like, why is it that you are the way that you are? And this goes back like even to childhood and like what happened in your childhood that made you how you are. I figured out at the very end of this, of last year, like I said, this is through journaling, through therapy, that I have a fear of abandonment. This is a fear that this, or this, I have a fear of being hurt. This is, that's the biggest thing I have. I, I don't think I deal very good with rejection. Uh, I, I'm, I have a problem with that. Like I really get down on myself. I really beat myself up when it comes to rejection and when it comes to getting hurt. Like I've ended a lot of relationships with women prematurely because I was afraid of getting hurt. I was afraid that I may have gotten too close and I may have gotten hurt. I hurt a lot of people because of that and I, I feel bad about it. And it's something that I still deal with. That's one of the things that, that came from my parents' divorce when I was a, a child. And I really like took that hard right? So I've been, uh, my, I had gone to therapy as a kid for a small amount of time, but that, uh, like my parents' divorce really affected me. And like I said, it's affected my relationships where even to this day, I prefer not being in a relationship to not be hurt. Then it, it kind of couples up with this whole thing of MGTOW. And I, I really, I'm a, I'm a firm believer of the, of the MGTOW beliefs and how that combines with this fear of uh, of abandonment, this fear of being hurt, and how it just kind of makes me push away from relationships. This is one thing. Another thing is compulsive behavior. I, when I have something, I want more of it, and there's no, like sometimes no control. I, I have a very addictive behavior where I've been noticing um, as of late 
I've been trying to do this uh, delayed gratification. So what I've noticed is how hot and heavy I was about sex workers the last two years. And now it's starting to kind of cool down since I'm going uh, more weeks without like seeing a sex worker every single week. Goal number three is basically dig deeper into what makes me tick. And I just feel like if I can find my triggers, I can know what makes me tick. Like I can find out why I act the way that I act then I think it'll just make me a better person. It'll put me more in control of myself and my emotions and uh, my urges. Those are the three goals. Uh, number one is to travel to six places. Number two is more delayed gratification. And number three is to find out more about what makes you tick. And it's funny, like this calendar that I have that I, I, I said before where I'm writing down like when I see a sex worker, when I masturbate to porn, when I overeat. On the same calendar, I'll go ahead and write down when I travel. On a calendar, on a big calendar, maybe this is a tip that can help you. If this is something maybe you're trying to do, uh, you're trying to have weight loss this year. You're trying to maybe eat better. Maybe take a calendar, you know, a big calendar with big boxes you could write in and write down the days that, you know, you're not living up to what you're trying to do. You're not accomplishing your goal. And also write down other things, other things that you're trying to monitor. Like I, this day I ate bad food, this day I ate pizza, this day I ate healthy. See if that works for you. And maybe tracking your behaviors or tracking what you're doing then it can help you and give you like, show you a win. Like, is there a pattern here? It's like, are oh, these the days that I get real bad? Or was I stressed or was I bored this day? And that's the reason why I overate or something like that. So maybe that can help you. But how can I monitor, uh, find out more about what makes you tick? Well, the uh, only way I can monitor that is by reading more books about, like I said, abandonment or reading more books about compulsive behavior, reading more books about porn addiction. This is uh, how I can monitor that, like just basically consuming more of this information uh, with the hopes and the attempts to go ahead and make me a better person in dealing with the world and hopefully in dealing with uh, relationships with women. You know, it's not, I don't know if this is something that I want in the end, but I do know that when I treat other people better, I treat myself better. I've said before on this podcast that the way that you treat others is the way you treat yourself internally. So those are my three goals for 2020. I have, like I said in the top, I want to hear one of your goals or all of your goals. Let me know on the blog. Let me know in the numerous ways that you can contact me. If you're watching this on YouTube, please comment below. If you're listening to this in the podcast, go to the blog. Thank you so much for listening and keep making that popcorn pop in 2020.